a super drugged approach where I tried to use like DNP to like burn the fu just like inferno my way to a fucking shredded physique um, using hella appetite suppressants to make sure I, I wouldn't overeat when I was on the DNP making myself borderline hyperthyroid and actually stripping muscle off, off my frame even on anabolics So guys, Derek from PlateSmartEats.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about a common mistake I made cutting back in the day and I see made all the time now that is going to hinder your progress, make your cut, your cut a lot harder. So, you know, there's this whole debate about calories in, calories out, the uh, um, laws of thermodynamics, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not gonna argue calories in versus calories out isn't a thing. Like that obviously does matter at the end of the day. That's ultimately what is going to dictate if you lose or gain weight. However, something that often goes overlooked um, without getting into the realms of, you know, cortisol and fucking hypo and hyperthyroidism and stuff like that, autoimmune disease, a lot of things that play into it. The difference between cutting calories and increasing your cardio and adding in something that increases your energy expenditure like a fat burner or something. How do you know which to do and when? And does it all actually equate to the same thing at the end of the day? No, it doesn't. So this is the big mistake that I made back in the day and I see people do all the time now is they will aggressively cut their calories but do no cardio or they'll just aggressively use fat burners and do no car do no cardio. So while the obvious, you know, the it doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell you why, you know, slamming a fucking shit ton of stimulants um, and using clenbuterol and making yourself hyperthyroid and all these things to um, increase your energy expenditure is not, you know, going to be a healthy, uh, not a sustainable practice. You know, we'll just kind of put that off the table right now, the fat burner thing. The discussion is more so, how do you know when you cut calories versus increase your cardio? So typically when somebody starts a diet, what they'll do is cut, you know, go into a deficit. They might be 300 calories, it might be 500 calories. Some people are really aggressive and they'll make the mistake of going, you know, 500 plus calorie deficit off the bat, which leads to metabolic adaptation much quicker than it would otherwise. And at the end of the day, you know, it is, do you want to increase your energy expenditure and burn more calories? Or do you want to eat less and therefore you don't have to expend as many calories through activity, rather you're expending it through simply depriving yourself of the intake to begin with. You know, it doesn't exactly equate to the same outcome at the end of the day. And this often goes overlooked because it seems like just a simple math equation, but what a lot of people forget and completely overlook is the fact that once you start to get into a calorie deficit, it becomes very difficult to, especially when you're eating these satiating foods to stick to your strict deficit, the micronutrients you need to maintain optimal physiologic functions to keep your metabolism running properly to keep your natural testosterone production going top tier to keep all these things that regulate your metabolism and how well you're going to recover how well you function how well different processes in the body are going to occur are dictated by your micronutrient intake as well as your macronutrient intake so if you're already deficient in macronutrients and then you're eating satiating foods that are not micronutrient dense because we're having all these things that are, you know, filled with sucralose and filled with shit that tastes good and is, you know, good for sticking to your deficit. It becomes very easy to quickly get into the realm of not even hitting your RDAs for micronutrients. And I'm not gonna argue like when I'm in a steep deficit, I'm using these satiating foods too. And I'm like, you know, having to use supplementation to hit my RDAs and stuff like that because I'm simply not getting it through my diet. But what a lot of people just overlook is they'll go way too aggressive on one way of getting that calorie deficit, AKA they will go aggressive into a deficit with doing no cardio and they'll just be lazy. And this is not the way to do it, in my opinion. Now you can, you know, get lean without doing any cardio, especially if you have tons of muscle on your frame, you're going to simply burn so many calories at rest that you can actually maintain, um, and a lot of it is just insulin sensitivity too. Like when you have a shit ton of muscle, you simply are primed to peel fat off your body and just process and partition nutrients very effectively. Um, unless you've induced a self-induced state of, you know, insulin resistance or something and you use copious amounts of GH and eat a shit ton of carbohydrates all the time and your diet model's trash. 
But that's besides the point. Anyways, the point is, <laughs> is when you get too steep into a deficit, if you're just gonna decide, like I've seen some diet models where it's like, we do no cardio, we cut 300 calories off the bat, which is fine. But then when weight stalls, we go down to 400 deficit, then we go to 500 deficit, then we go to 600 deficit, all the way down till a guy is eating like less than 2000 calories before he's doing any cardio. Like they're trying to do like an entire contest prep with no cardio, which, you know, maybe you can get away with it. And some people can, maybe, like some guys who've, you know, primed their metabolisms through the entire off season, um, they're eating so much fucking food at the end of their off season, maybe they can, you know, get down to, 2,500 calories and be stage ready without even needing to step on a treadmill pretty much. Um, but they're few and far between. Um, typically, you're going to see guys who are like men's physique size at most. And they're, if they're doing this diet model, it's typically not gonna work out well for them. And especially even open bodybuilders, they're gonna lose a lot of muscle typically going the realm of restricting food over top of adding in some sort of additional energy expenditure. Like at the end of the day, food is what is going to keep muscle on your frame. While you could argue, you know, the energy expenditure you get from the cardio is equivalent to that if you just cut the calories. It's not really, because you're getting less nutrients into your body too. Like the micronutrients that actually fuel certain functions you need to actually support the burning of fat. And this is something that just goes overlooked in my opinion, because you have these guys ending up at, you know, sub 2000 calories, eating as many calories as a girl, and then they're plateauing and it's like, they still haven't even like step on the fucking treadmill dude like go ride a bike go on the elliptical go do something <laughs> that's not just your you know four days a week at the gym for an hour each session and you're just like depriving the shit out of your body of macro and micronutrients because you're too lazy to add in some cardio and then on top of that a lot of people want to argue about you know the fasted cardio versus you know the cardio has no additional benefit like if you know how to manipulate pharmacology to induce super physiological amounts of lipolysis in the morning, you can leverage fasted cardio in ways that are going to give you fat loss above and beyond what you're going to get by simply reducing your calories. Like there are a lot of advantages to implementing cardio in addition to having good cardiovascular health. Obviously doing cardio is important for health reasons, but then on top of that, you don't have to deprive yourself as much of macro and micronutrients when you do cardio too. So at the end of the day, just like pretty much anything, what is the solution? It's a happy medium of everything. It's, you know, a parallel amount of caloric restriction with a parallel increase in energy expenditure as things start to get tougher. So you, you know, maybe at the start, you'll do a 200 to 300 deficit. And then after that, what do you do? Maybe you add in a, you know, you increase the duration of your cardio sessions by an extra five minutes, or you add in a you know, another 20 minute session to whatever your current protocol is. And then from there, you know, you can either titrate down the calories or titrate up the duration of cardio or add in another session if you feel you need it at the lower minute amount and then you titrate up accordingly. And you know, when you get to the tail end, you know, once you start to really like exhaust your resources in terms of, um, okay, you're starting to dip really far into uh, cutting into your micronutrient needs and whatnot, you know, that's where the kind of conversation around pharmacologic intervention comes in with throwing in the fat burners that can alter your energy expenditure, the clenbuterols, the things of this nature. Like I don't think anything should be proactively used above and beyond what you can simply do. Like honestly, anybody who abuses drugs to kind of like get to where they want to be, they end up looking like shit. And this has happened to me in the past too, where I tried to use, I tried to like drug my way to a good physique for a uh, cutting phase before, as opposed to before that, where I'd done like a perfect diet with, you know, slow tapering down of calories, slow increase of energy expenditure, only throwing in the fat burners when actually needed. And the intelligent, healthier approach ended up with more fat loss and a better physique than the super drugged approach where I tried to use like DNP to like burn the, just like inferno my way to a fucking shredded physique, um, using hella appetite suppressants to make sure I could, wouldn't overeat when I was on the DNP, making myself borderline hyperthyroid and actually stripping muscle off, off my frame, even on anabolics while on the DNP. Um, it's just like dumb shit that like, you know, you would think it's common sense, but it's not something you, and you would think I would know it's common sense, but this is, you know, just goes to show we all start somewhere and we all learn as we go. And that's, you know, something I experimented with back in the day. I tried the like really hardcore drugging route and it actually produced worse outcomes than doing the intelligent kind of like comprehensive approach. So, you know, the thing, like I, I know people who hate cardio so much that they would rather just eat like nothing 
and starve themselves, which, you know, you could argue too that cardio is going to increase your appetite, which indirectly can make cutting a bit harder. But it's something in the fitness community that I feel just goes way too overlooked is the importance of micronutrients. There's there's so much focus on just like the numbers on a piece of paper for the macro in macros in versus energy expenditure out but no one's really looking at like are you hitting your zinc requirements are you getting enough fucking copper are you getting enough this are you getting enough that like a lot of things that are necessary to maintain proper functions are you getting enough iron in are you doing this are you doing that um are you getting enough basic fucking vitamins like some of this stuff no one's tracking they have my fitness pal and they're tracking protein carbs fat but no one's tracking their micros and it's like it's very basic stuff that if it's not, you know, where it's supposed to be, it's going to have an impact on your biomarkers as well as your hormone production, not just thyroid, not just endogenous androgen production, but a myriad of other things around the body that facilitate how you're gonna function, how good of sleep you're gonna get, stuff like this that's indirectly going to impact like everything else. So, you know, I think more emphasis needs to be placed on um, the micronutrients, but I'm going to be the first to acknowledge that it's nearly fucking impossible to stick to a, you know, like perfect diet when you're in a strict deficit, it's simply not sustainable when you're trying to get shredded or stay shredded. So in that case, that's where the happy medium has to come in, where you're, you know, at least trying to like play a fine line between having a good healthy diet, a sustainable amount of calories with a reasonably healthy, you know, overall diet practice or diet model. And then you increase your energy expenditure accordingly, but you don't <laughs> underfeed yourself to the point where you're fucking starving, you're malnourished, you're losing muscle, your metabolism slowing down, and uh, just because you don't wanna step on a fucking elliptical, you know what I mean? So that's kind of my approach now to cutting, and it has uh, just overall, it, anecdotally in my experience too, the guys who are willing to you know, do some cardio and not just preferentially like wipe out their calories prematurely, those are the guys who typically won't reach a plateau, won't plateau as hard at an unsustainable level of um, dieting. Like usually the guys who, you know, cut their calories way too hard, way too quickly and don't do any cardio, they end up at like sub 2000 calories and they're still not where they want and they end up stripping muscle off their frame. And even once they start to implement the cardio, it's like, you've already kind of like fucked your metabolism up. You know what I mean? So don't put yourself in that position. Just, you know, have a balanced approach, just like anything. The balanced approach typically wins out in the end. So a diet model that's reasonably healthy that you can stick to and is sustainable and won't make you want to kill yourself. And then, um, you know, some extra cardio to expend some extra energy, nutrient partitioning, helps digestion. Very obvious stuff that, you know, in unison, has a more comprehensive extra fat loss while maintaining normal functions in your body that otherwise may be, um, you know, subpar if you uh, aggressively go to one or the other extreme too much. Because obviously you can over cardio yourself too to the point where you're just too fucking wiped out to have a good workout and your workout suffer and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Like there's, there's always too much of something. So a moderate kind of like comprehensive approach, I feel like at the end of the day is what's gonna win out. And that's even in implementing the pharmacology too. If you get to the point where, okay, my calories are getting so fucking low that it's just like, I'm losing size, I'm losing strength, I'm losing, uh, my metabolism's going down the toilet. Um, I'm fucking cold. I can like literally <laughs> see my body temperature going down and my, T, my free T3 levels plummeting. You know, maybe that's a point where you need to start uh, thinking about, you know, maybe I need to implement some pharmacology here at this point to uh, really, uh, you know, check off all the boxes and not just uh, go too aggressively in one direction that's gonna fuck my body up. So take it all into consideration. Moderate kind of comprehensive approach, in my opinion, is the best way to diet and it has served me the best over the years. So take from that what you will. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, have any of you guys, you know, had experiences with uh, just going full blown like heavy duty deficit versus doing a moderate amount of the cardio with the deficit with the you know pharmacology and whatnot what's your experience one versus the other you know at the end of the day some of this is just anecdotal so uh, but this is my experience through uh working with clients working with myself um a lot of you know years under my belt at this point seeing it play out this way and uh you know, but for some people, they would rather just like fucking under eat. <laughs> that works for them. But I mean, for most people, I, ju I just feel like it's not a sustainable practice and certainly not the most ideal way to go for like 90% of people. So anyways, 
Let me know what you guys think. Like I said, um, all the comments help the algorithm, so they're much appreciated. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic if you are seeking hormone optimization or TRT. Um, our patient care coordinators are well qualified to take a look at your bloods A to Z, address any imbalances or deficiencies you may have, refer you to our doctors. It's all telemedicine through the comfort of your own home, FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, whatever's convenient for you. And then our doctors will make a personalized protocol for you based on your individual needs. And then all your meds are shipped right to your door. And you can save $50 off your first shipment of medications with the coupon code MPMD50. Just mention it to your patient care coordinator or on the uh, intake forums when you sign up for your account and uh, request an appointment. If you want to support Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, Gorilla Mind is my turnkey nootropic formulas for focus creativity, productivity, just getting more productive hours out of each working hour in the day. This is what I use to help me knock out uh, 14 plus hour work days on a regular basis. Um, you can check those out as well as uh, my pre-workout formulas. Pretty self-explanatory what pre-workouts are, but I encourage you to just go pull out your current pre, look at the label, compare it to the label on Gorilla Mode, the classic formula with the uh, blend of stimulants, nootropics, hyperhydrating agents, NO precursors, plasma expanders, etc. Compare the dosages to our stimulant-free formula, Gorilla Mode Nitric. Um, the maxed out top end L-citrulline dosage, the higher glycer pump dose, the nitrosagene, the extra agmatine sulfate, the everything you could want from a stimulant-free, just maxed out product that you can use at nighttime. You don't have to worry about uh, overstimulating yourself before bed and getting the uh, max performance you possibly can ever out of a pre-workout and then also gorilla mode stim the newly launched uh cost effective version of gorilla mode with all of the pump products taken out it's just the mental component but enhanced to an even more significant degree we doubled the tyrosine we doubled the kana the caffeine is higher the n phenethyl dimethylamine citrate is higher this product is the stacked cognitive only version of the pre-workouts and is at a cost-effective price point for those who simply don't care about having L-citrulline, the glycerol, and all that kind of stuff in a pre-workout. So if those interest you, check it out, video description below. Anything else I'm associated with, video description below, as well as a, uh, a diet model. I would recommend you try, um, perhaps not for uh, cutting, but more so for bulking. This is a diet model called the Vertical Diet that is a uh, probably the most newbie friendly um, diet model for gaining muscle that I have tried that allows you to hit both your macro and micronutrient needs while also being mindful of gut health, micronutrient intake, um, digestion, a bunch of things that are often neglected in diet models and bodybuilding. So check that out if that interests you. Highly recommend it if you don't know where to start and you are kind of just getting into bodybuilding for the first time and want a comprehensive approach to diet that uh, kind of uh, checks off all the boxes for you, saves you a lot of time and research. So, and anything else I'm associated with, video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.